So double and half identities. We are going to first see where they come from and then do some applications, some example problems. So we're gonna start with, uh, well this is really sine of two theta, theta plus theta is two theta. Now we're as theta plus theta, we have our sum formula for sine of an angle plus another angle, and this goes sine theta cos theta plus cos theta sine theta, and they're both the same, so there's two of them. Now I'm not going to use, I'm not gonna leave these parentheses in, but now's a good time to warn you about notation. And let's go over here on the right side, so this is a warning. About notation. So we just saw a sign of two theta. So <clears throat> you want to be careful when I write sine squared theta, I usually put my exponent uh, intentionally higher up so I don't confuse it with sine two theta. Uh, so these are definitely not the same thing. Uh, sine squared theta is not the same as sine two theta, despite the fact that it uses the exact same letters and numbers, it just, uh, you just raise up the two, you just you know, shift the two up, make it smaller, and write it up higher. So this, this right here is actually ambiguous. This is what I would call an ambiguous two. I'll write it a little bit bigger so it's extra ambiguous. Now is that an exponent or a coefficient? It looks like it could be either one, so this is ambiguous. Uh, there's a few ways to fix it. One of them is write your exponent extra small and your coefficient, make sure it's uh, full size. Uh, the other way to fix it is if you use parentheses, it's really obvious that you want to multiply the theta by two before it is the input for sine. Over here on the left, uh, there's really not a way to parenthesize. You could put your theta in parentheses so it's a little more clear that just the input, the input is theta and that two is uh, part of the sine, it's, it squares the sine function. So this is bad, this ambiguous is bad. So I call that a lazy exponent because it's hanging down a little too low. Um, or make sure you don't have a, if you're using coefficient, make sure your coefficient uh, doesn't uh, sort of cheat up or get written too small. All right, so that's our first double angle identity, sine two theta. So you can basically cut your angle in half using this. So we're gonna do play the same game, except start with cosine. So cosine goes cos, cos minus sine, sine, I don't have to pay attention to which angle is A, which angle is B, because they're both the same. So we cos squared minus sine squared. Now look at your exponents. Make sure you don't have that lazy exponent going on. Make sure those twos uh, are clearly superscripts. So here's one version. And again, all these 10.4 identities are all in your uh, formula page. So you don't need to uh, memorize this. Now, whenever you see a cos squared or a sine squared, you can always uh, swap it out for uh, either the other, the other function squared plus or minus one. So we're gonna use the uh, identity cos squared plus sine squared equals one, and I'll solve for cos squared. So I'm gonna replace cosine squared with one minus sine squared. Uh, 
and left side's the same. Uh, but now we have one minus two sine squared theta equals cos two theta. All right, our next identity is right here. And our last identity, we're going to solve for sine squared here instead. So sine squared is one minus cos squared theta. That two looks like it's getting a little lazy, uh, but I know which one I mean right there. Now I have to be extra careful here, sine squared is one minus cos squared theta. Just make sure I got my signs correct. All right, one minus two is negative one. I like to write my positive terms first. Two cos squared theta minus one. So we actually have three choices to use here. And depending on what our goal is, we'll use different ones at different times. And to be consistent, let me take these uh, parentheses off. All right, so these are all for cos two theta. We got sine two theta up top. And what else do we need? We're gonna do a tangent two theta as well. Might as well throw it in right now. So exact same thing we did before, except now I'm using the sum formula for tangent. So if we look on the top, there's two tangent thetas. And in the denominator, we got one plus tangent times tangent is tangent squared theta. That's our tangent. Now you might be wondering as we're going through, why aren't we doing much with uh, cosecant, cotangent, and secant? Well, we'll do some identities that have those in there, but basically if you see secant, you're gonna write it as one over cosine, and then you can use a sum formula for cosine, the double angle for cosine, whatever of those formulas you need, you write them in terms of sines, cosines, and tangents. And then you can use all the uh, identities we have here. So that's our tangent, okay. Example, if sine theta is three fifths and pi over two less than theta less than pi. So I'm gonna find two things, sine of two theta and cos of two theta. probably have fractions here, so let's give ourselves a little more room. Okay, so we got information about sine. We also got information about theta uh, right here. What does that tell us? Bigger than pi over two, less than pi, so that is, just think about unit circle, pi over two is here, pi is here. So our angle theta is somewhere in between. So we're in quadrant two. I don't know why I'm writing in Roman numerals. All right, so we're in quadrant two. Now, does this match up with sine being positive? I know something's negative in quadrant two. What is negative? The negative is the x coordinate, which is cosine. So our sine is completely okay being positive in quadrant two. So that's no problem. So sine is three fifths. All right. I need to figure out what is theta. So there's a few ways to do this. Oh, we don't need to know what theta is. We need to know what a sine of two theta and cos of two theta. So yes, nowhere in this problem does it say what is theta. All right. We just got done writing all these double angles formulas down, sine two theta. There's only one choice for sine two theta. It's right at the top of the screen two cos theta sine theta. All 
uh, cos 2 theta, there's three choices. Now, I'm going to pick one of them on purpose. I know about sine. So when I go to pick which of the three should I use, I know about sine theta. This is the best choice because it only uses sine theta. All the other ones use cosine. So 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So I can go ahead and sine is 3 fifths, so I'm just going to use that value, 3 fifths. Make sure you're plugging it into sine. So you have to make sure you square it. And we'll simplify this. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25 times 2. Common denominator. 2 times 9 is 18. And that is 7 twenty fifths. All right, that is our cos 2 theta. How in the world are we going to figure out cosine theta? Man. So we know about sine. We want to get cosine. Well, how do we relate sine to cosine? Uh, there's a few ways to do it. You could use that funky one where it's pi over 2 minus theta. But the problem is if I, I'll write that one down. Flip a couple pages back. So I could use the cos theta equals sine. It's not a bad move because I would immediately not have a cosine anymore. But the problem is I now need to figure out what in the world is this value, uh, which I could use a difference formula for. In doing so, I'd reintroduce another cosine theta uh, because it's going to be, you know, sine of difference is sine pi over 2 uh, times cos theta minus cos pi over 2 sine theta. So that's not a direction I want to go right now. So let's think of an identity, another identity related sine and cosine. Sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Now I'm going to solve for cos theta. So we got cos, whoa, cos theta. Now that's cos theta squared or cos squared theta. And now I'm going to square root both sides. So what did I forget to do? I took something that was squared, which was cosine, square rooted it. So that could be positive or negative right there. So from here, now I'm using the fact that I'm in quadrant two. And we said cosine, the x value is negative. So that's why I chose negative. And now I'm going to plug in the 3 fifths squared. Hmm, so we got, so that'll be 9, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25. Common denominator, 25 minus 9 is something, 16, negative 4 fifths. That seems correct. I'm a little worried about, oh, oh, of course. All right, that's not our final answer. Negative 4 fifths is cosine theta. We're Finally, ready to take that negative four fifths and use the value here. So we just got the value of cos theta, negative four fifths, and sine theta they gave originally as three fifths. Multiply all this, two times four is eight, times three is 24, with one negative sign, 
please be the same. Oh no. Oh, that's okay. They're not supposed to be the same. One of them is sine two theta, one of them is cos two theta. Now, if you're typing this into web work, obviously it'll tell you red or green, right or wrong. Uh, if you're on a quiz midterm uh, or, or just can't check for some reason, uh, there is there are some things you can do to make sure that this actually uh, has a reasonable chance of being correct. Uh, so let's talk about checking for a minute. We're not gonna be able to check everything, but there are uh, some things that we can check. So I wanna know about two theta. So I'm gonna take this, multiply by two. Now multiply all three sides of this inequality by two. So between pi and two pi. So we're in quadrant three or four. Definitely not in one of these two quadrants, one and two, those are out. All right, so do our values match? Uh, unfortunately, because we have some ambiguity, all I can say for sure is sine is negative. Sine of two theta is negative, which I see is happening right there, that's good. Uh, the fact that cosine is positive here is okay. All that tells me is 725 is positive or somewhere right in quadrant four because cosine is positive. All right, the other thing I can do to check, no matter what, sine squared of two theta plus cos squared two, if I could write two theta, what should this equal? Well, two theta, two theta, same angle, sine squared of that angle plus cos squared of that angle better be one. And if I plug in these two actual values I got, sure if it equals one, we'll find out in a minute here. All right, am I gonna square 25? No. Uh, I could if I had to. Seven squared is 49, no problem. Uh, 24 squared, unfortunately I do have to square that. And we're multiplying, four times four is six, carrier one, two times four is eight, nine, 24, 48, 6, 7, carry the 1. Uh, 576, 49. We're adding. 5, carry 1, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Another one. Hmm. Well, turns out 25 squared or 25 quarters is $6.25. So there we go. Um, this is in fact 25 squared over 25 squared, which is definitely one. All right, so you can check like that as well. Hopefully your numbers won't be too bad. Um, this is a Pythagorean triple right here. If I multiplied everything by 25 squared, I would see 24 squared plus seven squared equals 25 squared. All right, fun times with numbers. All of this is not relevant. Correct, but not, not really relevant here. Now, I say this is not a full check because just because they added up squared, added up to one, I, I could have had the wrong two values in there. So just because they add up squared, add up to one, that just only means they're on the unit circle. Now we're gonna create some more identities. And we're gonna start with that cos two theta. And we're gonna 
do is solve for sine squared theta. Now, there's not too many algebra moves we have to do. Generally, when doing algebra, you're going to go up the PEMDAS ladder. So please excuse my dear asshole sister. Go up the ladder. When in doubt, go up the ladder. You don't have to. This is uh, more of a guideline than a rule. You do not have to go up the ladder. So for example, I wanted to get rid of that minus 2. My first move would be multiply by negative 1 half. Uh, but let's go ahead and subtract 1 first. Now we're going to do that multiply by negative 1 half. Both sides. On the left, actually, I'm going to rewrite as <clears throat> I'm going to write this as negative one plus cos two theta. So before I square, uh, actually we're done. We solved for sine squared, but I got too many negative signs. So what I'm going to do to this fraction is multiply by one. Well, I'm really going to multiply by negative one over negative one. But there's two parts to the top I have to distribute. So I got one minus cos two theta over positive two equals sine squared theta. All right. That is the first of our th three new identities. What we're going to do now is use the other two forms. Uh, so I think the other one, one is two is two cos squared, two cos squared theta minus one solve. for cos squared theta. So add one to both sides. And multiply by half, or divide by two. So you're gonna notice I'm gonna skip a few algebra steps if I'm skipping too many steps. You definitely want to hit pause. Make sure that you know how I got from this line to the next line. And pretty much the same steps as above. There was just a lot less negative signs to worry about. All right, so that's how to. So both of these are how to take sine squared or cos squared, and you basically reduce the power. These are called power reduction. Last one we're going to do, so we're going to do it one for tangent squared. But we're actually going to shortcut tangent squared. Of course, that's tan theta squared. You don't have to do all these intermediate steps here. All right, so sine squared over cos squared. Well, how do we deal with sine squared and cos squared? Ah, oh, we have them right here. So we're gonna use the sine squared and cos squared in the box right up here. So sine, sine, sine squared is on the top. So we got one minus cos two theta over two divided by, now we got fractions of fractions. You need to keep the numerator denominator carefully uh, separated. Now it's very tempting to multiply by uh, the reciprocal of the denominator. However, uh, we can certainly do that, but we can also multiply by this. So why multiply by this? Well, you're gonna multiply your two, that two into the numerator and that two into the denominator. Now, 
I'm being very careful where the arrows go. I'm not multiplying it into just here. Actually, I am multiplying it into just there because uh, that's how you multiply fractions. Uh, if you want to see the full, the, technically the full fraction I'm multiplying by, this might make it a little bit more clear. And now when I multiply the one times the two and then that two times the negative, or the numerator, two, one. The reason I'm doing this is because the two, the multiply by two is gonna cancel the divide by two. So probably the best way to label all this is just go cancel, 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 cancel. You'll get the same thing if you multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. Your twos would end up canceling. And that's our reduction, uh, power reduction for tangent right there. Now, this does turn tangent into cosines. It doesn't turn tangent squared into some other tangents. So our first example, um, actually this looks like our only example before we get into some more identities. So we're gonna reduce cos to the fourth x to single powers of cosine. Well, I can reduce cos squared if I only had cos squared. Well, I'll just write cos squared and we'll do a trick that we did in a previous section, cos squared squared. There's really four cosines, cos times cos times cos times cos. So you could group it in cos times cos and then square that. Now inside, here is where I'm gonna use that identity written above. And now we're going to distribute the power to the numerator and denominator. Uh, when I do, I need to be careful. I'm squaring the entire numerator, not just the cos two theta. So I have to foil. And again, I am using this form. So normally there's plus a plus, uh, plus a b plus b a, but that those two terms are the same. So that is exactly how I'm foiling here. So one squared is one plus two cos two theta plus cos squared two theta. Might be a good idea to use some parentheses here. Divided by four. All right, this fraction is getting kind of ugly. So let's factor out one fourth. So the instruction said, right in terms of single powers of cosine, there's only one more bad guy we gotta get rid of, right there, that stupid square term. All right, how do we deal with cosine squared and drop the power? I know how to do that, I'll write that down. In the blue marker, cos squared, I'm gonna write it as cos squared x, I'm gonna use the x variable, equals one plus cos two x over two. let x equal two theta. So wherever I wrote down x, I'm gonna write two theta in place. Now I'm gonna be careful when that cosine in the numerator, we're really multiplying two theta by two and then taking cosine. So I'll put extra parentheses around it. And of course, two times two theta is four theta. There we go. So that's the identity we're going to use here. I'm trying to keep them all on the screen. Co squared two theta is. I'm going to write that as one half times one plus cos four theta. All right. <clears throat> all 
And really you're done here. You don't have to uh, simplify this anymore. There's really not much more to do. Uh, the only thing I can think of doing is distribute right here. And so we get one. Oh, I lost my, I lost my plus. One half plus a half. And then one plus a half is three halves. But I think it's good enough. So we have some new identities. So again, all these identities are going to be on your formula page. All right, so that problem's done. Let alpha equal two theta. And I'm going to plug into previous three identities. So I'm going to write them out. Scroll in a tiny bit. Let's see the order we did them. We did cos two, no. It's cos two theta. We did sine squared first. So that is our three identities, and we're gonna swap out uh, wherever we see two there, we're gonna drop alpha in its place, and of course, wherever we see theta, multiply both sides by a half. Wherever we see theta, we're gonna put alpha over two in there. All right, so here we go. Um, I'm gonna label these as one, two, and three. So for number one, Sine squared alpha over two. And let's see, what can we do after this? Uh, square root both sides. So here is our sine, our half angle for sine. Do the same thing for number two. So I'm copying off the second formula out there on the right side. And I don't know why I'm writing in thetas. It should be in alpha over two and alpha. Square root both sides. Plus or minus square root one plus cos alpha over two. And that's our cosine last up tangent. So I'm rewriting this as tangent squared alpha over two equals one minus cosine alpha one plus cos alpha and square root tangent alpha over two equals plus minus square root one minus cos alpha one plus cos alpha. Now, cosine is very much overrepresented in all these. And that's just the way it goes. The plus minus, the only way to figure out if you're dealing with a positive or negative is you have to know plus minus depends on the quadrant. Of alpha over two. 
So you basically look on the left side and think, should this tangent, tangent of whatever this alpha over two is be positive or negative? And there'll be a few ways we can figure that out. Um, you'll see in our example problems. But aside from your formula page, the, the other tricky part is you have to decide plus or minus here. And let's see, we're back here. So we have two more examples to go in this um, section in 10.4. Oh, that looks really ugly up close. There we go. a half angle formula to find cos pi over eight. Hmm. Half angle formula, cos pi over eight. Well, here's the cosine half angle. Don't know much about pi over eight. So we're gonna do, we're gonna let alpha over two equal our angle. So our angle is pi over eight. Here, we could find alpha, so alpha equals pi over four. And what next? We're gonna use this plus minus square root. I don't know why it keeps scrolling down. Two equals so this is cos, where are we? One plus cos alpha over two. We will need to decide plus or minus. Cos alpha is cos pi over four. That's why we just figured out what alpha was. All right, cos pi over four is one over square root two over two. And now we do need to decide plus or minus. All right, pi over eight, well, that's actually a pretty easy angle. That's a really small positive angle, way less than pi over two. So pi over eight is in quadrant four. Wow, and by four, I mean one. Uh, so everything is positive in quadrant one. So we're gonna go with plus, all right. Uh, there's really not much more you can do here. If you really want to get common denominator, add everything together, multiply by the reciprocal, I'll really quickly do all that at one time. Uh, the reciprocal of two, multiply by a half. This slow scrolling is driving me insane. I'm gonna try to tolerate it, all right. I would say uh, that's a really good stopping point right there. Don't, don't need to go any further than that. We chose positive, we get use the right formula, and we got this alpha over two to figure out what alpha was. So next up, sine negative pi over 12. All right, I don't really like negative angles whenever I can help it. Sine is odd. So I think we did something, I think we did a pi over 12 before using a difference formula, but let's use the half angle instead. So alpha over two is pi over 12 multiplied by two. So regular alpha is pi over six. And let's see. Uh, I can tell already sine negative pi over 12 
is already in quadrant four. So sine is negative in quadrant four. So no matter what's going on, I better get a negative answer at the very end. Just looking right where I started without doing anything else, sine of that angle is gonna be negative. So my final answer is going to be negative for sure. So we got one plus cos alpha over two. And by plus, I mean minus. Oh boy. Uh, cos five or six. I think five over six. So that's square root three over two. And I strongly recommend you don't try to simplify this anymore. These are trickier than they look, so we're gonna leave it like this. All right, last example. So given Cos alpha equals negative three fifths. Oh, that would be really creepy if I had to teach at that speed. So we're getting very specific information about the angle alpha in terms of what quadrant it's in. And we wanna find values of All right, without any more information, uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and write out what I know, which is the identities. And these are perfectly lined up, alpha over two, alpha over two. Right here, we got a sine, we got a cos. So we're gonna use those two in the boxes right away. That looks like a K. That should be an alpha, whoa. There we go. All right, so we're gonna use these guys. Obviously, we got a plus minus to deal with. Uh, sine is minus. So unfortunately, we're not in quadrant one. So we're gonna think about, uh, now remember, doesn't matter necessarily what quadrant alpha is in, we really need to know what quadrant is alpha over two in. So how do we take the only real information we have about alpha and get information about alpha over two? Well, I'm gonna multiply by one half. Now you wanna be careful anytime you multiply with inequalities because if you multiply by negative quantity, your inequality flips around. Now let's focus on a lot more pre-calculus one class. We're gonna worry about a little bit here, but more in the uh, inequality section at the end of chapter 10. Uh, we're multiplying by a positive one half, so this is very straightforward. Inequalities stay the way they are. Now I'm looking at halves and fourths, so I need to figure out. Uh, so we're bigger than pi over two, no problem. Pi over two is at the top. Where's three pi over four? Well, four pi over four. Remember, fractions only suck if you don't have a common denominator. There's four pi over four. So I can actually say we're in quadrant three, but specifically we're in the first little bit of quadrant, jeez, quadrant two. We're in quadrant two, but we're actually in the first little bit of quadrant two. So I can write alpha over two in quad two. All right, so from there, uh, what is negative? Cosine's negative. Negative, positive. All right, all we need to know is uh, cosine alpha. Good news, we got that information right up top. So the first one is positive. The square root one minus negative three fifths, which is plus three fifths over two. And we're not gonna simplify these anymore. We'll leave it like that. Really similar down here. We got one plus negative three fifths, which is minus three fifths over two. And 
And that's the last example from this section.